News in the world of Valheim, let's go! The Bog Witch update is out, yay, and time for Halloween. Let's take a look at what we've got and what's changed since public test. The Bog Witch update brings us a brand new trader that's found in the swamps who sells a bunch of different ingredients and materials for you using both brewing and new potions and exploring the new feast mechanic. This update also brings us new skills and tools for homesteading. If you're in an established world, or in a new world, you'll find the Bog Witch in kind of the same area around the map that you would find Haldor in that ring around the spawn circle. If you think you've explored the swamp too much because she'll spawn in unexplored areas, then you can try to use the dev command genlock in order to force her into your world. If that doesn't work, then check out my quick guide on how to force the Bog Witch into your existing world. We know the new trader is the Bog Witch. The new feast mechanic includes eight new feasts. There's basically one for each of the biomes and one for the ocean. With the feast, you'll take dishes that you've made and resources that you've gotten before. You'll combine them together into a feast and you'll be able to get multiple meals from that one feast. You sit it on the table multiple different people can eat from it and you get 10 meals. However, beware if you eat one and then try to pick it up, you'll lose the feast. So once you've taken a bite from it, leave it sitting there until it's all gone. In order to get the recipes for the feast, you'll have to buy an ingredient from the Bog Witch. Different ingredients come available at different times in the game. For example, there are some ingredients that aren't available until you've beaten a boss in a particular biome and then you get the recipe for that biome to go into the next biome. When you get in your existing game, you should move things around in your inventory or put something down and pick it up. That'll trigger the game to look again at what recipes that you have. And so that will make the items for sale at the Bog Witch. There's one exception to this and that is with killing a sea serpent because killing a sea serpent wasn't targeted as a triggering item in the game files before. So even though you may have serpent meat in your inventory, you're gonna have to go and kill a sea serpent again to get that activity triggered in the game files to be able to get that recipe from the Bog Witch. Most of these new crafting materials that you can get are from the Bog Witch, but there's also something that you can get from Haldor. The three new items of clothing are having to do with stamina and farming, farming the harvest set, and you can get that from Hildur. They've done a little rework on her camp too. Three new skills are crafting, cooking, and farming. The two new tools include the scythe for harvesting fields faster. They've taken player feedback on this and it's now available after killing motor instead of after getting through the plains, which makes a lot of sense. And then of course the serving tray so that we can now place down any food items or potions without using an item stand. Three new emotes, one new event, that's gonna be the ghost raid, and various bugs and fixes. Okay, we're gonna get into some specifics, so if you don't want them any spoilers, here's your warning. Face already touched on how they can be shared with people. The new skill of cooking reduces the time it takes to craft food and gives you a chance to gain plus one food while you're crafting. You'll notice it goes up pretty quickly in the beginning. The new skill of farming reduces stamina use when you're using the cultivator and increases the durability of your farming items. Plus gives you a chance to gain a bonus yield while you're harvesting crops. If you combine this with the new harvest outfit from Hildur, then you're in a really good shape when you're farming. The new skill of crafting reduces the time it takes to craft items and increases the durability of crafted items. This is for all crafting stations as well as reducing the stamina cost of placing build pieces. I really think that these could be separated out into two different skills. Builders have long been asking for a building skill. I think a building skill should also reduce fall damage because that's how most building deaths happen. Is it just me? So for crafting, we're gonna get the serving tray tool. You get that from the bog winch. It lets you place any consumable item down. You can also pick them back up using the serving tray. If you sit down a potion with the serving tray and just walk up to pick it up, you'll just drink it. 
So be careful of that. There's a lot of good uses for this, being able to just drink potions while they're sitting there, thinking for competitions, races, and of course, death runs. The new tool of the scythe, you have to first buy the handle to be able to make it, and the handle will become available after you beat motor. This allows you to speed up harvesting of your crops. Unlike using a pole arm on wheat, this will work on smaller crops too. Materials, you can buy barrel rings and candle wicks to be able to make barrels, which do actually have storage, the same as a small wooden chest. You cannot stack them, but you can use building hacks to get them kind of looking like they're stacked. And the candle wick makes candles which give a soft glow. It's mainly decorative. You can turn them off and on. They will turn off over time. And once they burn out, then it's like a little flat goo of wax sitting there, which could also be used for decorative purchase. Pur if you want to pick that up, you need to use your build hammer to break it, and then you will get the wick back to be able to build a candle again. Then there's all the different materials that you can buy at the Bog Witch now for making the foods and potions, like powdered dragon eggshells and fresh seaweed and spice blends for meals, the woodland herb blend, mountain peak pepper powder. You can kind of figure out from the names when some of these are gonna become available when you beat certain bosses. But like I mentioned, for the seafarers herbs, you have to go and kill a sea serpent again. And the Ashland serpent doesn't count. It has to be a regular serpent. No bone maw killing. I mean, you can kill them, but it won't get you that recipe. Build pieces, we mentioned the barrel and the candle. The two workbenches are the food preparation table and the mead kettle. When you first get in your current game, uh, these will probably pop up right away. If they don't, just move something in your inventory and they'll pop up. The food preparation table is where you're now going to be crafting any of the things that are gonna have to go into the oven, like bread. And the mead kettle is where you're gonna be crafting all of your meads now. So they divided things up because the cooking list in the cooking pot was just getting extremely long. So they've divided it up in this way for us. Also, the mead kettle will need to be placed over a fire for it to work. You can sit it down elsewhere, but it won't work. You can't craft in it unless it's over a fire. Then clothing, we have the harvest tunic and straw hat. Creatures are the witch and enemy faster. I'm probably not saying it right. That's the broom. If you take out the broom that's at her hut, be prepared for a fight. It ain't joking. But then you'll get a really cool broom trophy that you can use around your house. And the broom will eventually respawn. You can kill it more than one time. So then we have all the new foods and potions. You can kind of see which one is for which biome. Whole Roasted Meadows Boar, Black Forest Buffet Platter, Swamp Dweller's Delight, Hardy Mountain Lager Stew, Plains Pie Picnic, Mushrooms Galore a la Mislands, Ashlands Gourmet Bowl, and for the Ocean Sailor's Bounty. Then we get into the new means. Check out my video on how to get all of the specific means, what items you need to have in order to get them and what they do. I'll go into this in detail, but in general, the Berserker Mead, you can craft the Berserker Mead, Tonic of Ratatosk, Lightfoot Mead, Draft of Vanadir, Mead of Troll Endurance, which is possibly my favorite one because that gives you the extra 250 carry weight. Brew of Animal Whispers, Anti-Sting Concoction, and the Love Potion is only purchasable, and the Love Potion is a troll by the devs to us. I'm just saying, be aware when you use it. <laughs> I'm just gonna highlight some of the bigger fixes and improvements. Here's one of the best ones. Added the ability to craft five at once when holding down shift or left stick. That will work at all crafting stations. You do have to have all of the ingredients in your inventory still. Food is now visible in the player's hand during eating animation, that's fun. The console command that is added is sort craft to be able to sort crafting lists by name, type, weight, count, or original. That's super helpful, especially as these lists get longer and longer and you're looking for something in particular. Very useful. There's a reduced radius of burn area on fire pits. Most people won't use this one, but reset skill console command can now take all. That's good for people that are doing uh, content creation, just saying. And visual improvements. Mead bases now have individual icons. This is really nice. When you're looking at the meads, you can tell by color and 
kind of the icon looks a little bit different what it is um, unfortunately not when you set it out but in inventory you can see it here's another one that's going to be really popular barley flour max stack is increased to 50 thank goodness phew it only makes sense and flour was taking up so much space Here's the big controversy in this update. Feather Cape no longer has a boost to player jump height. This has been moved to the new Lightfoot mead. Okay, so this was a big controversy during public tests. Some people like it. They, don't, they thought the Feather Cape was OP. Some people really don't like it. They want to be able to jump. The Feather Cape is a never-ending source of controversy, but it keeps changing what it is and what it does. And initially you had to have hair trophies in order to make this light fit mean which had a five percent drop rate and so that was controversial they've changed it now so that you use uh, the hide from hairs to make it so that evens that out i think that was a good choice uh, you're not getting the jump height from the feather cape anymore if you want to get that jump height you need to use the new light foot mead which of course means that if you want to do that, you're taking up another inventory space by having to carry another mead along with you. This is the conflict for me in how much inventory space is there, how many things do we have to carry. The list keeps growing and growing, but our inventory space does not grow and grow. We're not getting any backpack. We're not getting any additional spots. Last that I saw a dev commenting on this inventory space thing, was i don't know within the last few days the answer was we are not getting separate inventory spaces for our armor and we're basically and, and we're not getting new inventory space for potions and we're basically not getting new inventory space no more that's what they think is part of the game is juggling everything within the spaces that we have would love to know your thoughts on that and then we have some little bug fixes for specific platforms, little technical stuff and details. There are still some little known bugs with the Bog Witch update, but they wanted to go ahead and get it out the door. They're already working on these bugs. There's nothing game breaking still wrong with it. Just little tweaks and adjustments that need to be made. And some of them have already been fixed this morning and will be pushed out in the next patch. So it's definitely already playable. I mean, it was playable on public test. So lots of good things in this one and it adds a lot more diversity to the game of what you can do. I like that they have focused some on the people that stay at home, keep the home fires burning with the farming and crafting and cooking skills. I'd still like to see a building skill. I know not everybody gets into it, but if you like get to the point news and guides, please leave me a like. It really does help the channel and help me continue making videos like this. Subscribe for more Valheim. Until next time, happy gaming.